Hello and welcome back to Relative Time. The channel's been up for almost two years, and one of the benefits of running it is that I've been given opportunities to get some good first-hand experience with some great microbrand watches. And this has been especially true over this last year, and because of that I've been trying to learn more and more about the world of microbrand watches. And I think if you were to do the same, it wouldn't take you too long before you start to hear talk about NTH and the man behind it, Chris Vale. For some, they're almost synonymous with the term microbrand. The bread and butter behind the NTH line is their sub-collection, and I think it's safe to say they are an homage brand, yet none of their watches are one for one with anything else. While the name does suggest that their cases are very subby-like, the rest of the watch with their dial and hands are really varied. Often, elements are combined from just various inspirations, with the goal of really creating something that can stand on its own. Sometimes that inspiration is obvious, and other times not so much. Now, because of NTH's position in the world of microbrands, I thought that for my own education that I really need to get my hands on one at some point. But rather than ask to get added onto a watch tour with a prototype, I decided that the best thing I could do is to go out and buy one. And that way I could just spend a good amount of time with it and form a proper opinion. So with that in mind, I started to take a look at NTH's website to see what models they had. And I really started looking into this with the idea of getting something different. And different is what I found with the NTH Takuna. Spec-wise, the Takuna is sitting at 40 millimeters wide without the cramp and 43 and a half width. So it's really just going for that sweet spot that should fit most people. And it follows that with a lug to lug of just under 48 millimeters, which as far as I'm concerned is just about perfect. Weight wise, it's sitting right around 140 grams and that's with its bracelet. So it just has a really good solid heavy weight to it, but not being overly heavy like some other divers. It's just easily a watch you can wear all day and forget it's there. But what makes this case just really stand out is that it has a total thickness of 11.5 millimeters, and that's from the case back to the top of the domed crystal, which is really just impressive when you consider that it still maintains a 300 meter water resistance rating. Many great divers out there are often regulated to summer duty, as they are usually a bit on the chunkier side. So as winter creeps up and the long sleeves and the jackets get broken out, those divers oftentimes wind up just hibernating back home. Yet here, you clearly have a very capable watch that you can just wear all year round. The overall case shape is a bit subby-like, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. At this point, it's not only a familiar, but also a time-tested design. Yet it's not an exact match, as NTH has added their own style to it. The finishing of the case is just excellent. It's brushed throughout, including the sides of the case. The only exception here is that there's a very polished beveled edge that runs from lug to lug. And that just adds a touch of finesse to a very tool-like case, which also includes a solid closed case back. And the case back here is a bit minimal and maybe just generic for the whole NTH line. The lugs are very slim and they curve down just slightly to aid in wearability. And you can see that they are drilled, which makes changing straps very easy. There's also a pretty wide, yet not very tall, low profile crown at the three. And one of NTH's signatures is that that crown where the logo is, is loomed. It's just a really cool touch. Now, since I usually wear a watch with a bracelet a little loose, I would occasionally feel that crown up against the back of my hand if the watch had slid too far forward. It's not a big deal, and my watch really shouldn't be up that far anyways, but it is something I noticed. Other than that, it's really just a simply fantastic case. Which is why most, if not all, NTH subs use the exact same case. So it's really more of a platform here that they can build off of, rather than something specific to one model. Which I think makes the case just really one of the best assets for the NTH sub line. It really is that good. Yet, at the same time, I think it's also potentially one of the biggest weaknesses for NTH as a brand. As for some people, the whole point of collecting watches, and especially in this price range and above, is to really just have something different and unique for each watch. To create a very diverse collection. And the fact that they're all the same case, just with different dial and hands, might be a turnoff to some of those collectors. As for myself, well, it's not necessarily advancing the art of horology but I don't really mind it 
And in some ways, I really appreciate the business sense behind it. If you have something that good, then why constantly reinvent the wheel? Rather, you can spend your time and energy on focusing on different dial designs, and then turn that around to get more watches to the market quicker to offer more variety. Although that said, I'm also not the type of person who collects multiples of the same thing. So it doesn't really help me want another NTH when I already have a Takuna. Rounding out the specs, the Takuna does use 20 millimeter straps, as well as it does have a price of $650. And you can just think about that and I'll come back to that at the end. The bezel insert is a very interesting choice as it's a PVD coated steel. And it does have this very faint circular brush pattern visible. So it's not gonna be as scratch resistant as a ceramic, but it's gonna be much better than aluminum. More importantly is that this allows the Takuna to have just this really nice dark flat black color, where there's no hints of any sort of reflection that you would normally have with a ceramic insert. The rest of the bezel is exactly as it should be. It's 120 click, unidirectional, and no back play to speak of. While it's not very tall, the slightly aggressive coin edge here just makes it really easy to get a grip on it and turn it. There is just a hint of resistance as you turn it, but then it clicks over with just a great sound and feel. A double domed sapphire crystal with AR protects the dial, and there's really not much else to say about this other than that underneath, that dial is just always beautifully clear, and you only just get a hint of distortion at the extreme angles. Now, as for the dial, while some of the elements here may have been inspired, I think as a whole it just really stands out on its own. As well as it's kind of something that's just really hard to pinpoint what it is style-wise. Maybe it's just a bit retro vintage mixed with some 80s sci-fi, or maybe just a touch of Polynesia as well. I'm just really not sure, and I think each person might wind up seeing it a bit differently. But it's clearly and definitely unique. And perhaps it's just too unique for some that would prefer something more cleaner and classic looking. But NTH has plenty of those. The dial itself is this dark matte black, and it really just sets itself up as a clean backdrop for the rest of the more interesting elements here. The hour and minute indices are painted on in this thick, off-white, kind of old loom colored paint. And this creates a very detailed, if not overly complicated, dial. Although I do wish they used just a thicker application of that paint. If nothing else, then just to add a touch more depth to the dial. Now, most prominent of those indices are going to be the 12, 3, 6, and 9, which are these oversized reverse styled Arabics. And beyond those indices, the red accents really stand out the most, which is going to be the logo, the water resistance, and the thin lines that connect the indices on either side. And those just wind up adding a touch of geometric flair, as well as a needed splash of color. And that leads us to the hands, which is really one of the most interesting things here and what drew me to the watch. They really aren't like anything I've ever seen before, and I'm really not sure what to call them. The second hand is a stick with a hexagonal counterweight, while the minute hand just kind of seems to be two arrows back to back. And then there's the hour hand, which is whatever this thing is. Whether you want to call it a geometric arrow, maybe a tiki head, or even a space capsule, just take your pick. This particular version has a date, and it's a bit of an odd positioning, yet it's probably the only position on the dial that I think would keep it from interfering with the design. Overall it's small, and that black date wheel really helps it blend in. It is only a simple cutout, but I think framing it here would just really make it more of a distraction. And I should point out there is a non-date version available. Personally, I like the design. It's just different, and it easily stands apart from all the other watches in my collection. Yet, to be fair, as I was putting this review together and just really breaking things down analytically to the individual elements, I kind of started getting the sense that maybe there really isn't a cohesive design that kind of pulls all these things together. So maybe it is kind of a bit of a mishmash, and I think for some that would drive them crazy. Yet after more than a month, I am still really enjoying the watch. The only thing that kind of throws me, I think, is that hexagonal counterweight on the second hand. I'm just not really sure it fits. There are some other geometric elements at play here, but they're a bit more asymmetrical. 
But while the individual components may clash just a little bit, I think as a whole they do work together, or maybe they just work to create their own style. The Takuna is just a very visually interesting watch, and I still find myself just staring at it and the various elements, and maybe in some ways I'm more trying to dissect it or just kind of figure it out like a puzzle. But more importantly, the design is one that just works in almost every condition, it's just easy to read. Now, when it comes to Loom, disappointment is not a word that usually goes with NTH. Yet here, I have to say that I'm actually a little disappointed, but just a little. The bezel, the indices, the hands, they all just make for a very cool and striking design. And it's just truly awesome to look at when it's all lit up. There's enough surface area here that the Loom is just very bright and very clear, at least initially. And that's where my disappointment starts to come in. I had some really high hopes for this watch, so when I put it into a comparison test, I did include the Great Wall. But the main thing to focus on is the Takuna and the Turtle right next to it. And you can see that the Takuna is just a little bit better than that Turtle, but not by much. Which, don't get me wrong here, it's still really good loom, and I absolutely love the way it looks. The Takuna is basically Seiko good, which to be fair, most people would be perfectly happy with. It's just that from doing these tests, I've seen a fair amount of watches with better loom, and for less money. So when I saw the Takuna with the amount of surface area it had, I just kind of expected it to be a little bit better. Now I did put it up in a second test just to confirm, and here I did put it up against the new Seiko 5KX. And it's a little better than that, but again not by much, and clearly not as good as the Orient Kamasu next to it. So it's still good loom and it's truly an excellent design and utilization of it. It's just not the great loom I was hoping for. Movement-wise, we have a Miyota 9015. It's high beat, 40 shower power reserve, hacking hand winding. It's really just a great movement overall. It's just at this price, some come to expect a more expensive Swiss alternative, such as a Salida or an Eta, and those people aren't wrong, as I think this is kind of on the high end where I'd like to see that Miyota. But to be fair, NTH isn't alone using a Miyota at this price. At least Notice and Seals are two companies that also come to mind. So while a Swiss movement might seem more appropriate price-wise, the thing is the Miyota is a really good movement. And one of the things that's great about it is how thin it is. And I think the 9015 is just a great choice when a company decides to take advantage of that and make a case to match. And here, with the NTH, it's pretty much a perfect application of it. Not to mention, I've also been very happy with the accuracy of every 9015 I've come across. And the Takuna here is no different, and I think I've only been gaining about 3 seconds a day. In fact, I think my only real issue with Miyota movements is that the rotor just always seems to be a little bit louder than other options. The Takuna comes with an Oyster-style bracelet. It starts at 20 millimeters and then tapers down to 18 before hitting a double locking clasp. The clasp also looks just really cool and it's really streamlined with two beveled edges on each side. We also have solid end links, a milled clasp, and just a really good brushed finish that matches the case. The screwed in links are a good size and they do fully articulate which just helps it hug your wrist better. And when you combine that bracelet with an NTH sub, well, the whole package is just extremely comfortable to wear. My only real complaint would be that the locking mechanism area is a little stiff, but I think that'd be broken in with time. And also the bottom edge of the clasp can be a touch sharp. It's not a lot, but I did notice it frequently when putting the watch on. Now, while I've nitpicked a few things here and there, overall I think the Takuna is a great watch and just a great overall package which I think would imply that the rest of the NTH subs are that good as well. But it's a package you are going to pay for with an MSRP of 650 NTH doesn't mass produce their watches, they're made in very limited quantities. And just for an example, with the Blue Odin, they only made 50, and that's 25 date and 25 non-date. So when NTH says they're limited, they really mean limited. And because of this, they don't have a lot of excess inventory. So that MSRP is exactly what you would expect to pay, either directly or through one of their distributors. Finding a deal on one of their watches is a rarity, 
it does happen, but I don't think you should expect it. Although I happened to get lucky and find one of those opportunities, so I actually paid closer to 400 bucks for this thing. And for that, I'm extremely happy with what I got. But I've really been going back and forth on their retail price. And I think if you look at the market as a whole and everything you're getting here, it is a fair price. Maybe a little high on the side of fair, but still fair. NTH is definitely not a value or bargain brand by any means, and they really don't want to be. And to be fair, you don't really have to look far to find a watch with similar but not quite the same specs for a lot less money. I've reviewed and even owned some, but all of them will be missing something. Maybe they're thicker, or less durable, or the finishing isn't quite as good, or maybe it's the bracelet. But here, with the Takuna and NTH, you're just getting a good, reliable package. Which I think is also one of NTH's greatest strengths. What you see is really what you get, so there's no real surprises with them. But to be fair with those other watches, I think most people would be completely happy with them as well. And in some cases, I think they're actually more interesting than what you get with NTH. When it really comes down to it, I think my impression matches that with a few of the other NTH owners I've talked to. While I wish the price was a little bit lower, I'm completely happy with what I got, and absolutely no regrets. But let me know what you think here, and not just about the Takuna, but about NTH in general, or if you think there's another brand that does it better. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.